Hello again, YouTube. This is the truth, man. Giving you the truth. If you accept it, if you don't, I'm still going to have a lovely life throughout all eternity in heaven. I'm not going to even remember your diss. Those of you who he he ha ha over preaching. He he he. You're laughing because you think you know me. I worked with you. I grew up with you. So you think it's funny that I'm preaching. Your loss. <laughs> I do it for the most high. I do it because I want to see people get saved. I do it for the most high. But in terms of me, you, me against you, it really doesn't matter what you choose. It doesn't matter. I'm hoping you make the right choice for your own good. But it does it's not gonna affect me if you choose to be arrogant, a narcissist, a person who follows the crowd into the fiery pit. And it's not going to matter to me. But I'm going to read this to you. And I'm a, I'm out here working as usual. And as I see fit and as the most I see fit, I make videos. I'm going to come back and be a little more fierce with this one. On bit shoot later. But for the sake of censorship, I'm going to water it down. Remember how when you went to the bar and your drink was watered down, you like, man, it's too much water, it's too much ice in here. Or when you go to the fast food and your soda, I'm finna get you some word with a lot of ice in it. So this is 2 Timothy chapter 3. For those of you who don't know, I like to read from the New American Standard Bible. It's more accurate and it's easier to read than the King James. Although you hear me reading from the King James sometimes. It says, But realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, play this one for your kids, please, unloving, irreconcilable, uh-oh, are they talking about these marriages? Malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, wretch, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. A lot of dudes spend more time trying to get some than they do trying to get God. We're going to water it down. Make sure you go to bitch you, though. You're going to get the full, you know. Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. You know, them people that went to church a couple times, their grandmama in the church. So they think they got everything all figured out. Avoid such people as these. The Bible tells you to avoid fake Christians. For among them are those who slip into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins. The Lord told me that me and you were supposed to have sex. You know how they be. But uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got to get this out with. without uh, getting strikes. It says, For among them are those who slip into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never ever able to come to, to the knowledge of the truth. You ever seen those people, right? They always listen to gospel music. Listen to gospel music more than any other kind of music, but yet they can't stop fornicating, can't stop, can't kick drug habits, can't do this, can't do that. They deny it. Not only are they denying God's power, but they are who he's talking about right here. So I would entitle this proof that we are in the last days. Proof that we are in the last days. Now, it's a lot of 
like he said, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You should get your money. You should focus on prospering in this world. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But in the bigger scheme of things, your spiritual life is supposed to come first. And some of the stuff that people do proves that they're not seeking God. They think he's soft. They think he's going to let everybody in. And then half of them are trying to make themselves. They making themselves not believe in them because it's in you to believe. Every soul knows who created it. It's in you to believe, but you're making yourself not believe. And like I said, uh, if you want to hear how me really go in on this one, you're going to have to go to bitch you. Truth Man 247. Because I'm going to talk about some things in regards to this. But I'm going to talk about some things here on YouTube too. It said that people are conceited. People are irreconcilable. You ever seen that person that you just, like, no matter what, it could be a petty conflict. Like, it could be like one time I, when I was in Texas. And some of you might have heard me tell this story. Me and the guy were having a conversation on the couch about abortion. Or not about abortion, but about child support. And there was one of the supervisors had like a couple kids and none of their fathers were in the picture, didn't help her, this, that, and the other. So she became offended and that was the uh, match on the match like charcoal. But she already had something against me anyways because when we were on the same level, she was allowing things that I wasn't allowing and she worked there longer than me so when it got back to the supervisor she was upset with me and from that point on she became passively aggressive so the whole thing was irreconcilable the supervisor even told her whatever you got against Howard you need to let that go she didn't listen to him I mean, and that's that's like irreconcilable conflict. Now, some conflicts you shouldn't even try to reconcile. Like if you got a wife that committed adultery, you, you don't reconcile with her. You get you either a new wife or you stay single. But you enjoy your life because for if a woman opens her leg, pulls her panties down, does this, does that, to to satisfy another man she should not be your wife I don't care if it only happened once she shouldn't be your wife because like I always say it's a process of, of going through the, the rigmaroles if you will if I'm not butchering that word of sex and a woman who takes her bra off, takes her shirt off especially if she does well never Let's, let's get back, you know, go to bed shoot. Um, so it's basically saying that people was boastful. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. This is how you know what you love the most. You know what you love the most by what you spend the most time uh, trying to attain. And I'm not talking about people who are trying to make it financially and things happen, you know, I'm talking about people who all that other stuff, all those other pleasures you put in front of God. Now, trying not to be poor, that's not, you're not, that's that's smart. The Bible even tells you to do that. So we ain't talking about that. We talking about the other stuff, like guys that are trying to play basketball more than they will trying to learn about God, trying to pray, or people who try to have sex and trying to impress men and women and that's why he mentioned the silly women laden with sins in those scriptures but the lover and conceited people you know those people that you can't tell them nothing like you can't tell them anything they think they got it the ones that wear sunglasses indoors you know you can't tell them nothing 
They think they are the gift to life. They think they are the best at everything. That's conceit. Because nobody's the best at everything. You should aim to be the best. But nobody's the best at everything. But if in your mind you think you're the best at everything, you're conceited. That's the definition of it. And he said in the last days, people will be conceited. And I say it every day. I don't, and this ain't even California. This ain't even uh, Arizona or Nevada or anything. And I'm still seeing it every day in Milwaukee for men and women. If you get in shape, yay, yay, congratulations. But when you need everything, that's like a boastful spirit. That's like a boastful attitude. Now, some things you want to make your money, and that's, like I say, nothing wrong with that. But when you do things like you try to get real buff, not because of health, not because of you want to look at that. That's what you want for yourself. But because you want to impress other people, I want you to know that you're one of the people that they were talking about in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And when I stop, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read some of it again. Because see, this is proof that we are in the last days. And I just did a video, Matthew 24 and 13, which in verse 12 it says, and because sin will increase, the love of many will wax cold. It will go grow cold. Like even me. I still want the best for people, but I don't always like being around a lot of people. I, I just don't. And I believe it's because the Second Timothy chapter 3 type of people. Lovers of pleasure, mother and lover. Lovers of this, lovers of that. You got relatives that's trying to compete with you, which causes a competition with you with them. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff that's going on right now in the earth that God has not ordained, which is proof that we in the last days. If you're a police officer, if you're a correctional officer, you see a lot of this plain as day. The conceit, the lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, the uh, boastfulness, people showing pictures of their house, you know, not because they're, they're happy they did it and happy they have it and humble, but because they want people, hey, yay. You know, that's what they want. There's people who don't get a haircut because that's how they want to look. They get haircuts all the time. They'll spend $100 a month on haircuts. Or they'll cut their own hair like six times a month out of fear of somebody saying they don't look right or to impress others. This is what he's talking about. This is what we see very often in these days. And why? Why? Why are we seeing? Because we're in the last days. We're in the last days. Whether it take um, 50 years, 50 years is the last days. You dealing in terms of forever. If the world ends in 50 years or 20 years or 10 years, then it still constitutes as the last days. Still constitutes as the last days. Now, let me just pull over. Pull over. I had to get from over where I was because I'm going to tell you something. Where I was just at, poor behavior. Ungratefulness. Some people is ungrateful. You you provide a service for them, and they're not grateful, and they don't show it. You know, you know, you know when you when you do contracting work and when you do anything in this field as a self-employee, and 
Like, let's say you got a cleaning business, or let's say you do landscaping, or let's say you even do DoorDash or something like that. When a person does not tip, that is ungratefulness. You have no reason to tip. I don't, and not to tip. I don't care how poor you are. You have enough to buy a plate. You should have enough to tip. You have enough to pay for a newspaper. You should have enough to tip. When a person provides a service for you, you shoulder your gratitude with money or gifts. Let's go back to it. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. It's extremely difficult. You got the wannabe thugs. You got drug addicts. You got panhandlers. You got uh, all these weird people in high places that think that their life is more valuable than yours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to bitch shoot later. It's coming, boy. It's coming hard when I, te when I teach this. For people will be lovers of self. Lovers of self. You got to be a lover of yourself to hang up in a person's face. Lovers of money. They'll do anything for money. We're going to talk a little bit about it later. I'm keeping a Truthman247. I can't wait. It's coming. Boastful, arrogant, slanderous, disobedient to parents. When your parents tell you to do something, I don't care if you're 25. If they're not asking you for something unreasonable and you can do it and you have time to do it and you don't do it, disobedient to parents. If they tell you to clean your room, keep your room clean. Every time your room ain't clean, disobedient to parents. They didn't do this stuff in biblical days. It didn't happen as often. Ungrateful. You blood, sweat, and tears for some of these people. And, oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you this. Oh, you that. Ungrateful. Unholy. Don't read the Bible. Don't pray. Don't watch nothing to gain spiritual wisdom. Unloving. Racist. They don't help the poor. And we ain't talking about people who are making themselves poor with poor choices that you use in discernment. You don't give all of your money to somebody addicted to drugs. Oh, yeah. Woo. Man, I can't wait. Man. You know what? I might do it after this. But I, I I need to keep working, though. Malicious gossip, lying. We're going to... Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up, because I got to get this out right. And I know I can't do it on YouTube, because either they're going to push it to the back, it's going to have one view, two views, or they, they're not going to let people see it if I bring that force. Lovers of pleasure, rather, it says treacherous, reckless. You you in somebody's yard. You, you invincible. You're in somebody's yard trying to steal. Conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, although they did not have denied its power. Avoid such as thee. Listen, a lot of y'all is fake believers, and some of you ain't fake believers. You're a real believer, but you lack wisdom. You think that you're supposed to be around everybody. It's not true. It tells you, avoid such as these. But we're going to uh, close it. This is proof we're in the last days. Did I mention anybody you know? Of course I did. I may have even mentioned some of your tricks. Listen, ain't none of y'all dudes the top dog. Ain't none of y'all women the top cat. There's somebody that can beat every single one of us in every single thing. And don't be the fool that's stupid enough 
to die out here in these streets. I told you the scriptures say that people in the last days are reckless. High speed chases, other people driving around. They reckless. And they could take you out in the process. Then it's too late. But thanks for watching. Proof we in the last days. I could have went to Matthew 24, gave you more proof. I could have went to Revelation and gave you more proof. Just look around. You got everything going on. All type of mischief, sin, everywhere. In your house, in this person's house, in that person's house. No accountability. People don't want to be accountable. They just want to get away and maintain their normal standard desired living. Everybody act like everybody owe them the world. Stop needing friends. Stop needing people. You can start right there. And then you'll be you'll be able to do good. If you stop needing friends, stop needing people. Let them come. Let them come on their own, because if you chase, you're going to get the wrong ones. But thanks for watching. This is the truth, man. Hit that like button. Share. Subscribe.